I'm seeing the one sign. Okay. We'd like to welcome you tonight to our Hendersonville Regional Planning Commission meeting for Tuesday, June the 1st, 2021. And uh, as a first order of business, we're going to start for with an opening prayer. I'm going to call on Ms. Beery down there. Ms. Lauren, why don't you open us in a word of prayer? Dear Lord, we just come to you tonight, and I thank you for this opportunity that we get to uh, come together and just review the things that come before our city. Thank you for our awesome city and the citizens that we get to serve. I pray, Lord, that you would just give them, give us wisdom tonight, allow us to have discernment in each and every project, and uh, we just give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We'll note tonight that uh, everybody's here, I think, except Ms. Longmire, am I correct? All right, so Ms. Beery, make that a adjustment that we have nine members, nine commissioners present. I need to know that. All right, tonight uh, <clears throat> we're going to have a meeting on, get some public hearings. We've actually got three tonight. The first one is a public hearing to hear comments on the proposed abandonment of an unused public right of way known as Dwight Sherland Court near the intersection of Stop 30 and Saundersville Road. Uh, looking at the information sheet tonight would note that there are no uh, people signed up for that hearing So therefore I declare that hearing closed The next hearing tonight is for uh, it's by Bart Thomas to approve a final development plan for Monhaven place That's Hallmark Hyundai and to add Motor vehicle dealership to the list of permitted uses this property is located on the west side of Monhaven Boulevard At the south side of Comer Lane as identified by Sumner County tax map 160 parcel 0 0.5 050.05 and chair would note that there are no people signed up for that particular hearing so we will declare that hearing closed the next hearing we have tonight is a request by Gregory Lutfi to approve a comprehensive development plan for the Sanders Ferry adult living community and to rezone the property from suburban living low density SR1 to Old Town residential plan development OTR PD. This request also includes an amendment to the general framework map of the Hendersonville land use plan and to change the character area designation of the property from suburban living to Old Town. And the property is located at 216 Sanders Ferry on the west side of Sanders Ferry Road north of Connie Drive as identified on Sumner County tax map 1641 parcel C uh, parcel 025.00. And I would note tonight, the chair would note there are 19 that are signed up. And let me just speak to the, to the people that are here tonight for this hearing. Um, the first thing is, is, number one, we've been through many of these over the years. And we're delighted that you're here tonight to hear, uh, to hear your comments on, on that. Um, with having so many here tonight, uh, I, I would entertain a motion by the by the board um, that tonight that we would uh, on 19 people speaking that we would uh, suggest a five minute cap on comments. Uh, we realize tonight that there'll be many comments made, many might overlap one another, but we would like to uh, uh, just make sure everyone gets heard and that we're not here all night. So. Uh, we want to make sure we do that well, and so if uh, we have no no objection, I would entertain a motion to that um, that we would just have a five minute cap on any comments made tonight by citizens on this uh, on this. Do I have a second? Second, second by Ms. Stringfellow. Any any discussion? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing no nays. That is carried. Okay. Uh, we're going to go on tonight now. The first one that will be coming up tonight is Eric. And, I, and please help me with I want to make sure I get the names right. Uh, it looks like, is it Jansen or is it Jansen? Eric? Okay, Eric, if you would come to the podium, please introduce yourself. And we're delighted to hear your comments tonight on this particular development. Go ahead. Good evening. Thank you all for listening to us and arranging this meeting so that we could voice our concerns. We appreciate that greatly. I know a lot of cities that kind of have this 
more so in times that people can't come and speak. So it's appreciated that you all take the time to listen to us as well when you're planning these things. I am not from here. I did not grow up here. I moved here from Illinois, um, big campus town. So I am familiar with both the rural and suburban areas as well as kind of the big cities. So I've kind of seen it all. Um, with regard to what's proposed, I don't see it working as a function as to what we have as current infrastructure. We do not have the roads to supply this. From what I understand of the zoning and the uh, core, we do not have the rights to widen those roads in order to create that infrastructure to support this. Currently, the Sanders Ferry Road and Main Street right now is one of the most congested. You can basically make your way up through there from the um, exit ramp over by the Waffle House and heading back. And as soon as you hit Sanders Ferry, you're pretty much going to start at a stop and go, maybe standstill, um, stop and go if you're lucky. Uh, both due to the school traffic and the traffic for the Indian Lake Peninsula residential area and then the other side of the street, the Indian Lake Commercial District as well. So with all of that in concern with the proposed area going in and the influx of traffic that new people and residents in that area would create, we simply don't have that to accommodate that flow and I don't see how without the Corps' permission, we can change that. As such also, I moved here because I wanted the smaller town look. I wanted that feel. I didn't want high rises. I wanted something that felt like a community instead of a bunch of people who were here going to be for a short time or not necessarily the uh, smaller town community that a high rise would present. So I don't see people from here wanting to move to those communities. So having those things developed in our communities is kind of the opposite of why I think most people in this room live here. We want to have a place where we know most of our neighbors. And that becomes exceedingly difficult when you start increasing the number of people that we have living on top of each other. Um, as far as the development is concerned, I think a lot of people are not familiar with how long of a time that's going to take and the amount of noise and anything that that construction is going to take. So you're going to take people whose now residential backyard is going to become a construction zone for possibly potentially years, especially if you actually do get the approval to widen the roads. That's going to make a long process even longer for the people who moved here for the quiet and for the small town community. Those are just my thoughts and opinions. Um, I appreciate you all giving me the time to speak them. And if you all have any other questions, I would greatly appreciate posing them in some sort of social format into which you have more uh, opinions voiced, but going forward basing on your decisions. Thank you very much, Eric. We appreciate that. Uh, I would like, no, 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 no response, please. No response. No response. Um, we would like to now turn to, uh, Ms. Beery, we, we received, the Chair's been informed, we received a lot of emails, and uh, why don't you give us the number of how many emails we received and a synopsis of for the commissioners of all the emails. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, we received several public comments via email for this hearing, all of which have been provided in the commissioner's digital packets or the email I sent uh, later or earlier this afternoon. Um, 63 of those comments recommended denial, um, and four of the comments recommended approval of the proposed project. Um, all of these items will also be provided to BOMA should the project move forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. I hope the commissioners got that. And just a aside, Mayor Clary touched on this a little bit before, but this process tonight is the starting point for any applicant that chooses to uh, rezone property. Um, our intent tonight is to look at the viability 
to look at the submittal in light of our zoning ordinance and in light of the qualifications that it takes for a rezone to exist. For the Planning Commission, we do not uh, uh, delve. We, we Sometimes we ask the questions, but we really have no say-so over dollar amounts, over impact fees. We can make suggestions. We can do all of those things. Um, we have a lot to say about architecture. We have a lot to say about uh, what goes where in the context of the rezone and the zoning uh, ordinance itself. So uh, tonight will be the first, the first effort. And so out of this meeting tonight will be an outcome that will be a recommendation, and you need to understand this, be a recommendation. One option could be a recommendation for approval. And that would uh, require, of course, the, the voting that was necessary, but it would also say we're going forward to BOMA. If that does happen, there will be another public hearing. And all of you that are here now are, you know, I would expect would be there for that as well. Then there also could be a motion to uh, deny, a uh, recommendation to deny. Each of those particular findings, whether we go with a motion to approve or a motion to deny have to be done, not arbitrarily. It cannot be done because we just don't like it. It can't be done because of uh, anything else but the findings of fact within our zoning ordinance and what the state law requires. So um, that's what's going to happen tonight. Um, I have served on this commission for 14 years and chaired many of these types of meetings and and so we are glad you're here tonight. We're glad that uh, you're speaking. And we just want to go forward tonight, and uh, we want to hear your comments. I would say that if you hear a comment that someone has already made with regard to a particular uh, aspect of the submittal, not that we don't want to hear it again, but we already know it, you know, because we've heard it one or two times. So uh, just have that in your mind when you're speaking. And other than that, that's what's going to happen tonight. There will be a point after this is all said and done with, with the hearing, that we will go into the business. And at that point, we will then give the developer and their designees the chance to present their project. And we will also uh, allow commissioners to ask questions and uh, whatever we need to do um, to make a decision. It's at that point where that business handles is between the commission and the applicant. Right now, the, co it's the commission is interested in what you have to say. So I wanted just to make those comments as we started out tonight and appreciate Mr. Uh, Jansen's co comments. And now we're going to uh, speaker number two. It's Jessica Jansen. Jessica? Hi, I'm Jessica Jansen. I'm sorry you get the both of us tonight. Um, my husband touched on most everything that I wanted to say. Okay. Um, I actually live on the other side of the peninsula. I live on Cumberland Shores Drive. <clears throat> Cumberland Shores Drive is a known cut through to get off of the peninsula. I can't let my 14 year old go check mail at my house because my road's a raceway. If we build if we allow something of that size to be built that's going to bring that much more traffic and we are completely unable to do anything about widening roads, it's going to make it 10 times worse down my road. And it's, it's not fair to the whole peninsula for the people. I mean, we, we live here. It's, it's our community. It's our residential community. I don't know that there's any other peninsulas in our general area that even allow such things would even toy with the idea. And I don't think that we should either. The schools are full. I'm actually pulling my son out of school to homeschool him because I've decided that that's, he's, he's just not getting what he needs. There's too many kids in the classrooms already. Um, and it's not because, it's not for lack of effort. He's had really great teachers everywhere he's been. But um, I, I just don't see this project working. I have, I have lived and worked on this peninsula for the last eight years as a home health nurse, and it's, it's my home. And I, I just, I don't, I don't know how we can support it. Um, and, and that's all. 
short and sweet. Thank you, Jessica. Our next speaker tonight is Chris Radigan. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for letting me speak. Without rehashing everything that's already been addressed tonight, yes. as per your request, and I didn't think anyone needed to hear it multiple times anyhow, yeah, um, I fully go along with what the Jenkins have already spoken about as far as traffic, as far as the congestion in the town, getting on and off of Sanders Ferry Road, the schools, etc. cetera. Um, I live at 444. We live at 444 Sanders Ferry Road, which is by Drake's Creek Marina. Okay. It's a drag strip down there. They do easily 70 miles an hour. I know it because I've, pa I've not passed, but traveled behind some of these guys on my motorcycle. They drag race. They have loud popping exhausts. That's just increase in population of people coming here from various places. When you bring in 300 more units in one building, that initially, as per the meeting that we had at the lighthouse, if you want to call it a meeting, it was it's going to be a 55 and plus community, 300 and something units. Now it's 300, however, 122 of those are going to be rental monthly family units. We were told there won't be any impact to schools for taxes. Now that we found out that that is not true or it has changed, 122 will be multifamily, who knows how many children. We were also told the 55 plus folks do not drive. <laughs> I don't think I have to go any more than that, seeing as a lot of us were there. So. When asked about the taxes, it was your taxes won't raise because there won't be any schools. There won't be any traffic problems because no one drives. Then it's like, well, people do drive. We're going to widen the road. Well, how much of Sanders Ferry are you going to uh, widen? How many residents are on this block? How many homes? They had no answer. Eventually, it turned into, we're going to widen the road between our two buildings. Now it's go from the buildings to Main Street. OK, we already addressed the problem by BP and Lincoya Cafe. If we have 300 more units and 600 more vehicles, are they not going to travel to Sanders Ferry Park going south on the road to the park? I was told on a web page that's supposedly run by Mr. Lutfi, I'm sorry if I said your name wrong, sir, um, was told that this isn't a bass tournament, it's just an apartment complex. Well, I don't know about you, but if you live four miles from one of the best parks in this town, you're going to drive to it. So there's going to be congestion going that way. I go to work in the morning, come home in the afternoon like a lot of other folks do. I will wait five minutes to get out of my driveway. Weekends are horrific. I can't get out. Sometimes I got to pull the boat out. They'll speed like we spoke about in and out of the park. So adding seven stories aside from being an eyesore, and this isn't Seaside Heights, New Jersey or Miami Beach. This is Hendersonville, Tennessee, the city by the lake. It was a nice, beautiful bedroom community. It's grown more than I'm happy with but you have to have some growth. This is too much growth and way too much excess and too small of a place. If it needs to be built somewhere, the lake isn't it. Maybe the Mount Juliet side's a little better. So I just hope that everyone thinks ahead to what the future will be, because I know there are zoning from 30, 40 years ago. So the peninsula I don't think is the right place for it. And I just urge every elected official, that includes BOMA, I don't know who's here from BOMA today except for a couple of folks, there was an oath that everyone took to listen to their constituents and not to base their votes on any private lunches or anything with developers that would break that oath. So please go by what the constituents want and what's best for our community because we all live here. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Please, please. Uh, next one would be Kim Duhani. I probably got that wrong, but... <laughs> I'm going to be short and quick and to the point. I, like the Jensen's, moved here from Boston, Massachusetts 20 something years ago. I've put tens of thousands of dollars into my 1970s home because I have almost a, qu a quarter to a full acre of land. I have neighbors that have the keys to my house. In the last five years, the traffic, the congestion, and the crime has gone up tremendously. We, I didn't say anything when they put the apartments in, the yellow apartments. I didn't say anything when they put the houses in. But when is it going to stop? And how is it going to stop? If I wanted to, I could have stayed at my half-million-dollar house in Boston and not moved to Hendersonville. I wanted a community. I wanted some land. 
and I wanted a neighborhood. And Mr. Lefty, I want you to promise my family if for some reason we needed to evacuate the peninsula of my safety. We have had many tornadoes. We live by the lake, flooding, all of that. My concern is my safety. Traffic is horrible. If I'm going 38, 40 miles an hour down Saunders Ferry, there's someone on my bumper or passing me. The racing down Saunders Ferry is horrible. The traffic is horrible. I work from home when I'm not traveling. I said to myself, I'm going to go out and drop my dry cleaning off. It took me 25 minutes to go from La Plaza to the dry cleaners right down here on Indian Lake. I didn't think it would take me 20, 25 minutes to drop off my laundry one way. We're talking three and a half miles. You know, at what point in time do we stop? You know, you put the apartments in, you put the houses in, you put the duplexes in. I mean, what point are we going to have a peninsula? Why not the other side of the lake? Why not Indian Lake? I don't see them having apartments. I don't see them having housing complexes go in on five acres of land. You know, I'm sorry I live in a 1970s home. But I love my neighborhood, and I love my safety. And then with the 55 plus, what about our EMS? What about our fire department? Unfortunately, I had the opportunity that I had to call on them one time to save my husband's life, which they did. What if they couldn't get there in time? With those 55 plus, and I'm, I'm hitting 55 myself, so I mean, we're talking health concerns. You know, and nothing, every, all these complexes go in and my taxes go up, and I know that's another committee. But for my safety and my family's safety and my neighbors, who are actually my friends and I consider family now, take that into consideration, that you don't have to call Mr. and Mrs. Dahoney and tell them that, I'm sorry your daughter didn't get off the peninsula because we had a disaster. Thank you. All right, good evening. Um, so I wanted to speak briefly tonight. I promise I will keep it brief. Um, I just wanted to express my opposition to the rezoning of this property uh, from suburban residential low density to old town residential plan development. This proposed rezoning would accommodate two seven story buildings with a total of 300 units. I almost found it laughable when I heard this because I truly could not, I don't think I could think of a less suitable location for this type of a proposed development than Sanders Ferry Road or anywhere on the peninsula for that matter. I'm against the proposed development for all of the obvious reasons, uh, including the negative impact on traffic, roads, utilities, et cetera. These have been discussed ad nauseum with as much development as we have seen come through this area, so I'm not gonna repeat uh, what you have heard from citizens time and time again. I've been a resident of Hendersonville for the past 17 years, uh, having since moved here from Boston, Massachusetts in 2004. Now I say that I moved here, but it would be more accurate to say that I actually fled from there. Those of us who have quite literally fled some of these northern states know all too well the reality of living under failed policies with the consequences of overdevelopment. And we can see the writing on the wall. I escaped the burden of high taxes, skyrocketing housing costs, unfettered growth in crime, and collapsing infrastructure. When I came here to Hendersonville, I instantly fell in love with the small town feel. It offered a slower pace from what I was used to being born and raised into you know, the big city living. This is a little bit different for me. Not to mention it was much more affordable and I was able to finally purchase, uh, I was able, sorry, I lost my place, I do apologize. <laughs> Uh, it's much more, okay, so it was a much more affordable cost of living that would turn my dream of becoming a homeowner into a reality when I was able to purchase my first home here 10 years ago on the peninsula. And then the beautiful lake. Of course, the lake is not what drew me here, but it is certainly a welcome amenity. I understand that change and growth is inevitable, 
Hendersonville has grown exponentially in just the time that I have been here, but we need to focus on responsible growth and whatever is developed on this property should adhere to the existing structure and landscape of the peninsula. I'm not at all surprised that so many people would find Hendersonville to be an attractive community to move to, but we simply cannot accommodate everyone. At what point will certain people realize that we are developing away the very essence of what makes it so attractive in the first place? Quality of life counts. The amount of time we spend commuting, that matters. Life is short, so please allow those of us in this community to have a voice in that which is gonna so greatly affect our daily lives. The majority of Hendersonville residents have repeatedly and emphatically said no to this rezoning. Please listen. Thank you, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak this evening. I'm Kerry Massey. I'm here to also voice opposition to this project. Uh, not so much to the project, but to the location. Uh, this has uh, already been expressed, the, the overcrowding, the infrastructure, uh, the safety concerns of uh, uh, first responders getting into and out of the area. Uh, I am assuming that it was zoned uh, low density residential for a reason. I don't think that reason has uh, been diminished. It certainly has not uh, uh, it's already overdeveloped, and uh, I'm concerned about that. So uh, I just want to uh, encourage you all to deny this project in this location. Thank you very much. Stephen Imbrick, or Imbrick, I'm sorry. Thank you for holding this meeting and giving us a chance to speak and, and to email you. And um, I was really interested in the tabulation on the emails. 63 opposed, 4 in favor. I think that would be a, probably a pretty representative figure throughout the whole process uh, for the um, people that agree with the project and the community. Uh, I bought my house quite a while before some of the others here. Uh, it was 26 years ago. And it was way back when we called it Saunders Ferry. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I love the idea of it being uh, suburban residential, low density. And I've enjoyed living in the community ever since. The peninsula is wonderful. I've used the boat ramp there at uh, Mallard Point many times. Um, I've enjoyed the uh, quiet and everything else. Uh, I certainly agreed with everything that's been said so far, especially Eric and Jessica over here. Uh, regarding children. I have uh, raised my own kids here, went to school here and stuff. Now I have grandchildren that I'm taking care of on the peninsula. And um, I've noticed an increase in traffic, noise, and crime just in the last couple of years. But it's hard to imagine what it's going to be like five or ten years after this project goes into place. And um, so that's basically all I wanted to say. And again, appreciate the opportunity to speak to everybody. Thank you very much. Um, John Pr uh, Prentice. Well, first of all, I need to uh, apologize for the email that I sent you folks. I titled it 248 Sanders Ferry. I'm 55 plus. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that You're forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we knew what you meant. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> My insurance payment will prove that. Uh, that does bring up the point, though, that this proposal attempts to bind together two different, solely different projects. Two, uh, 216 and 248, and they drag those in together, and uh, candidly, that's nothing more than an attempt that if I can get one, wait, you can get two, only have to pay extra shipping. That is, that, that's not how this thing is supposed to work, is to drag those things in together. Uh, not included in, in Old Town RFP. We have an RFP out right now, looking to hire a consultant to help us revise some of our old town specifications and requirements. That area does not, in fact, include this property, period. So it has no impact on that whatsoever. 
Now, the, the developer wants, he says, OTR zoning. Then follows page after page of exceptions to OTR zoning. Covered those in my email, but very quickly, he wants a 46 person per acre versus 15 density. That's an exception. He wants 45% versus 40% lot coverage. Common space, now there's a good one to get your calculator out for. OTR says 20% common space. Our multifamily ordinance says 35%. They're proposing 25.5%. Now look at how at that page you figure out how they got there. Those calculations are suspect to say the least. Included in their open space are the retention ponds, which are specifically excluded by our ordinance from counting as open space. Then if you look down where the green land runs along the border with the core property, there's a big calculation in there for those green areas. Those green areas go all the way around. Now going down to core property, that's supposed to be open space, but if you look at the other drawing, there's a six foot retaining wall down that whole line. Not sure how six foot retaining walls and open space go together at all. Then the other little green dots that are counted into that are spaced here and there around it include parking lot light islands, little flower beds outside the door, and such odds and ends as that in order to come up with their open space calculation. Those need to be looked at very closely. As well as to control draining, they're showing the parking lot between buildings to be, quote, permeable paving. I'm sorry, our hard rain doesn't recognize permeable paving very well. And besides that, after a few years, the permeable is filled in with non-permeable, simple as that. Plus, if you make it permeable, it's not going to last very long with vehicular traffic on it anyway. And that's going to be a dreaded expense down the road for the HOA. Uh, they also talk about dumping their excavation over on the park so that it doesn't flood. I want to see the Corps' approval in writing before I even consider that as, as anything at all, because it ain't going to happen. It's just not. Driveways. Looking at their driveways, on their page where they took a little template of a Hendersonville fire truck, 40, a little over 47 feet long, and wound it around the driveway, even their drawing shows that it can't make those turves around the back side of that of that uh, project. It just, it overruns. And particularly back there where there's a six foot wall, you can't overrun that, I don't care if it is a fire truck. The other side of that is it's a 75 and a half foot tall building. We have two ladder trucks here that are 105, one's 100, one's 105 feet. Well, off the top, that sounds okay, it's only 75 feet. But wait, that's straight up. You can't put a 100 foot ladder straight up because you can't climb it if you do. By the time you lean it to get there, you can't get to the top of a seven story building with our equipment. So that puts an extra burden on our firefighters. If you have a problem up there, they got to do the interior up the stairwell kind of thing. Extra hazard if that ever occurs. Uh, the other thing about the driveways is our, we require in every place I've been able to find in the city of Hendersonville, whether it's single family, townhomes or multifamily, two entrances. One may not be used all the time, it's for emergency purposes, but you gotta have it. In fact, Nottingham right next door has such an entrance at the dead end of Connie Drive. That makes sense. You have a wreck right there at that one entrance, and you have another problem, how are you gonna get back to it? That's why we require two entrance and exits, and that's not here. Understand why it's not here, because there's absolutely no place to put it. The current entrance and exit is may barely meet minimum distance from the main entrance to Nottingham. It's just over 100 feet. Plus it's on a curve that makes sight distance go down that way a little iffy to start with. And there's just simply no other place to put another entrance. It's just that easy. On the subject of, um, of utilities, one of the things I noticed missing, this is a multifamily apartment, so they're not gonna roll the garbage cans to the street. I don't see any place in the parking lot set aside for garbage collection. Uh, typically, that's a big dumpster that you come up and haul off the whole thing. Nothing shown on here, and they've used every square foot of the thing for other things. That's something to look at. 
the other thing is a requirement in our multifamily code is uh, making available a place to park boats, trailers, and campers, either on site or off site. No mention of that whatsoever, and certainly no place to put it on site. Uh, you're not going to get them in and out of a parking garage, that's a fact. <laughs> Look into the conceptual drawings. I'm going to be nice and say they're misleading. Now, I understand the difference between a photograph and a conceptual drawing. But these conceptual drawings put this nice apartment building on a flat level lot with gorgeous lake views. Wrong. If you look at them, there's no evidence of that six foot retaining wall all the way down the core side. And they emphasize that as a lake view and as a common area. I don't know how you're going to get there over that wall. Uh, the elevation change front to back is about 15 feet. So to get it halfway level, and it's According to the drawing where the driveway runs level all the way around it, it's got to be level. So they're going to have to cut probably eight or ten feet to end up with six foot retaining wall remaining in the back, drag it to the front to level it up, which is going to raise that entrance up because their building comes within about 80 odd feet of the roadbed. So that's going to be a pretty steep slope when you come off of Sanders Ferry Road to go in there probably barely meet slopeway, driveway slope requirements to just to get out of the street, then you're going to go uphill. That's not what the conceptual drawings show. 55 plus, <clears throat> and yeah, I are one of those. All that really means is that 80% of the units have to be occupied by one person, 55 or over. End of requirements, period. The other 20% can be occupied by anybody you want. Now, the conceptual drawings for this 55 plus interestingly show swimming pools surrounded by very young, very attractive people and children. You know, so, you know it's one thing to say a conceptual drawing is not a photograph, it's another to intentionally mislead. And bottom line is, you got to just flat out reject this thing. No coming back with minor improvements or changes, just flat no. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prentice. Stan Williams. Stan Williams. I'm beginning to feel real old because I've been on that peninsula since 1974. Uh, I went to the lighthouse for the little wine and dine. I talked to the architect. I said, you've got Spade Leaf, you've got Parkside, you've got Hickory Bay Condos, you've got Nottingham. Now you want to put up 300 plus units there. Are you going to put a traffic light? We're going to do a traffic study if it is needed. Well, this afternoon when I came back from camping, I was driving. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> pulled on a camper and traffic was lined up on Galton Road at 2 p.m. to Clearview Circle trying to turn left on the Sanders Ferry. Days I have come home, turned down Sanders Ferry, and the traffic is backed up Sanders Ferry to the Lighthouse or Cages Road trying to get out. The guardrails on both sides through that section are leaning out. If you drop, drop off in it, you're not going to get out. You know, there's no the guardrail is not going to stop you because you're going to be nearly about upside down. Uh, the uh, it's two lanes now. If he wants to build something like Rose Point down there, where Wesley Rose used to live, a bunch of nice homes. I don't think anybody has objections. That couldn't be more than probably eight or ten homes. But to talk about 300 plus units. Now, I didn't have all the information the previous gentleman did. But I live at 200 Sanders Ferry Road, and I have trouble getting out of my driveway. Sure. You know, and he's going to turn around and move back to New Jersey. His architect's going to go back to Brentwood, you know, and we're going to be left with this. Now, if we're not getting any money for schools and not getting any money for uh, infrastructure, then we're just adding to the pro problem or letting him add to the problem and not ignoring it, uh, fixing it. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. There was talk of a greenway up there at the front of Sanders Ferry Road. I see the signs gone, so that must have just evaporated. Now his little greenway he talked about is going to be right there in front of his property. 
you know, you can have a little bicycle trail here, but the rest of you, you know, you, if you try to walk down Sarah's Ferry Road, you might need the ambulance to come get you because somebody's going to run over you uh, if you don't jump in the ditch over the guardrail. But uh, anyway, I just thought I'd throw those things out there. And besides that, I used to pick hay up off that field Thank years you, ago. Mr. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Patrick Hawthorne. Hey, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, I've lived in Hendersonville going on three years. My wife, my wife and I uh, became empty nesters, and we chose to come here. We chose a smaller community, okay? Uh, we love it here. We love our neighbors, but the traffic is just out of control. Uh, the website that this developer put up with this whole process, I don't know if you all saw it. You had the horse in the barn. When I looked at it, I just said, this is disingenuous. They're painting a picture that you can't do here. I have to deal with the core because I'm on the lake, and you, you just can't do some of this. So I found that to be disingenuous. Then I go to the meeting. No presentation, a bunch of blurry pictures and renderings that you had to go seek out information. I asked one of the gentlemen that was uh, with the group, and I said, all these cars, because my understanding is they're trying to do three different projects, not just the one we're talking about here tonight. But all these cars on Sanders Ferry Road, I said, how is that going to help us? And he said, Hendersonville's always had an infrastructure problem. Is that this going to solve our problem? This is crazy. So I think the people before me have made some really good points. One thing I haven't heard, wildlife. We love the deer. My wife feeds the deer. I hope that's not a violation of policy or something. But <laughs> if it is, arrest her. But the if it wildlife. is, we'll just rewind the tape. <laughs> uh, pop. Population density. I don't think any part of Hendersonville has got as much population, and I could be wrong, and feel free to correct me if I am. But there's been multi-unit housing after multi-unit housing after multi-unit housing. I'm, I'm guessing it all started before your 14 years because they're, they're old. I mean, when is enough enough? No more multi-unit housing on Sanders Ferry Road. You, you've heard from the people the, the construction is a problem. We enjoy, we, we, if it's nice weather, we're out back, sitting out back, enjoying ourselves. But the planes overhead and those cars that are real loud on Sanders Ferry Road, it's just out of control. Don't add to it. Please don't add to it. Uh, so traffic safety, one of, the, one of the things that the developers tried to tout is property values. Property values are important, but what about my quality of life? What about my neighbor's quality of life? And that's what I would really ask you to, to keep in mind here. Focus on those of us that pay taxes and live in this area. Focus on our quality of life. I don't need help with my property values right now. Um, so I think if there's just, if, you, if, if you're not convinced, and hopefully you are, you're getting there, one more thing, I think it was the same developer, uh, acquiring property, and I'm all for that. You know, I, I believe in people trying to make money and all that. But they're moving Sanders Ferry Pizza a mile and a half further away from me. And then you put all these people and all these cars and all these people over in pizza, and I'm competing with them to get pizza? <laughs> Come on, there's a, a, another reason why you just got to say no to this. Please, I, I, I beg of you. Please, thank you. Don't mess with the pizza, right? Grayson Leith. <coughs> okay, come. Hello, uh, my name is Grayson Leith. I'm 29 years old. I've lived here for 29 years. Um, I love Hendersonville. It's my home. Uh, I love it so much that. I want my family to be here, and it's so hard to say something I want to say that has already been said. Um, I just think, if you build this thing, what's to stop the next developer coming behind them? You're adding more to the fire without controlling it. It's not something that needs to be done in this town. If you want something like this, it needs to be put somewhere else. These are neighbors not uh, not something like Nashville. It's getting out of control. It's not, it's not something that needs to be here. Um, everybody had a great point. I can't think of anything that needed to be said. Um, I feel like I've come unprepared because everybody's really done their homework. It's quite impressive, pizza. I mean, man, that's, 
you know, traffic, crime, getting to you if you was in danger. I never thought of that until just now. Here I was just talking about something like, oh, this is just going to cause more traffic, yes, but I never would have thought about danger. I never would have thought about uh, <laughs> pizza, <laughs> you know, in comparison. But anyway, but yeah, uh, you know, I've sat outside so many times and listened to people with their cars late at night, just woke me up, and don't need a don't need any more of that. And I definitely don't want my property to go up just because something that's been introduced is just the new hot spot, so to speak. Um, it's just too heavy here. I don't agree with it, and uh, I hope y'all do too. I hope y'all reject whatever this plan is. Thank you. Yes, uh, Janet Clevett. This is my first city council meeting ever, so I'm a little nervous. Um, but um, I come from Venice Beach, California, where a similar thing happened, and instead of an individual builder, it was a company that came in and bought up a third of the boardwalk, tripled the rents, ruined the quality of life, and the whole why people used to like Venice Beach, California. And I thought, well, I can at least be another person in the room to say I don't want it to happen here. And one thing, sorry, I appreciate about Hendersonville when I moved here is the ecosystem we all live in on the peninsula, with the animals especially. And there's a deer, some of you guys write about, called tripod. Tripod was probably hit by a car. Um, there are geese that cross every day. You know, and not that animals are more important, but still what I love about the peninsula is we, we all appreciate and enjoy and live with animals. And also I saw over the weekend, the park was filled with trucks. Daddies, sons, fishing, boating. We have a lot of activity. It works. To bring in all of a sudden, all these all at once, the way it's built and calling it self-sustaining, I wonder who it self-sustains. It's not me. And I appreciate the builder I appreciate people having money to buy things, but all I ask is please stick within the zoning. I'm all for the zoning, but please do not rezone. I think there's a reason whoever first put those rules together for our little fragile, fragile peninsula. And the last thing I'll say is the greatest thing about our little peninsula is the whole public can see that beautiful lake when we drive down there. There's no fee to go down that beautiful road and to add that much more traffic and the children of people over 55 who probably a lot can drive and if not, their, their sons will be driving and daughters. It's just, it's just too much for right there. So that's all I'm saying. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Don Dixon. My name's Don Dixon. I'm gonna keep it short because you're getting close to my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm about to say comes from watching, listening, living my whole life here, experience. 81 years ago, I was born on a farm on Curtis Crossroads. One year later, my wife was born on a farm across from Curtis Crossroads. We still live there. I travel that road every day, sometimes two and three times a day. If you want a traffic study, since these couple of proposals have come up and what I've watched happen in the first two miles of Saunders Ferry Road, whether you're going or coming, 80% of the cars you meet are on that two miles. And why is it? For the last 60 years or close to it, nothing has been built on that road on those two miles except commercial and high-density buildings. The time to stop that. It's time to stop it in this community. Growth has been great, but now it's starting to hurt because of the quality of the type of growth we have. It seems like now zoning doesn't matter. 
if somebody buys a piece of property and it doesn't zone for what they want, they just come in here and ask for spot zoning. Zoning is for planning and developing our city. And I, I, I really didn't totally understand your, your opening comments, which I appreciated, about how you're bound, you have some limits as to what we say can affect yeah. what you do. But uh, I'll close with, with one other comment. Friday a week ago, I was coming out. It's a little before 7 o'clock in the morning. Right on this stretch of road from this piece of property we're talking about to Hickory Bay Towers, which is just across that little body of water. As we turned the curve coming out, car in front of me slowed, and we're already doing probably 35 miles an hour. It slowed to like 20. I said, what's going on? Is there a goose crossing? <laughs> uh, because that stops traffic, doesn't that way? You know, the geese and the ducks and now turtles. <laughs> and that's great. And I said, what's going on? And as we down to like 15, 20 miles an hour, I looked up. Now, mind you, there's 300, uh, roughly 300 yards of guardrails, both sides of the road. I saw this young girl look to be kindergarten, first garden age, running as fast as she could run toward us with a backpack on her back, fear all over her face. I couldn't figure out why, but she was scared to death. She, had, she was in the road. That's the only way you can run. And I said, we... I noticed the car in front of me turned in Hickory Bay, and I was going to turn somewhere next and come back, but I watched them, my rearview mirror and slowed down, they, and I saw them pull out and turn and go back toward her, so I knew they were going back to check on her. I assumed she made it safely because nothing was in the news. But uh, So I'll close with that. It's a very unsafe place. It's a road. It's going to happen if something's not done. But that's beside this point. This project is at the wrong time and in the wrong place. If it's needed, it needs to be a very approximate to a main thoroughfare. And I'm talking about the bypass or Gallison Road right now. That's the only two main ones we have. Thank you for listening. You're welcome. Beth Holloway. Hello, I'm at 209 on Laura Drive. Um, I'm also nervous if I start shaking or saying stupid things, that's why. Anyway, um, I moved here about 12 years ago, I think, and I'd heard good things about Hendersonville, and I thought, well, I'm this close, so I'll just turn it in the road and check it out. Church, wow, that church looks just like the church I grew up in. Um, small town feel. Y'all have heard it all already. Um, but it's really not something that can be beat. I grew, t I grew up in that kind of environment. As soon as I saw Hendersonville, I knew this is it. This is it. And um, needless to say, I'm here, so I'm against it. All these pretty red signs <laughs> um, I had made up. And I had the flyers made up. And I have a pretty good idea of the number of people that were at the park this past weekend because I was pretty much solely responsible for putting those flyers out. I initially got 200 made. I covered Mallard Point and I covered uh, the area in front of the actual marina. And the 200 ran out and I still had 50 cars to go at least. So I went and got 250 more for the following day to take to Sanders Ferry Park. And again, I ran out. So that gives you an idea of the number. And yes, it was a holiday. However, say, for example, the people that were traveling that road live in a two-car family. So you're going to double that. Um, 
add the fact that you're going to add 300 or, you know, assuming over 55 will continue to drive. And say, for example, they have two cars each. Do the math. I know for a fact how many cars were at the park this weekend because I went to every single one of them. So anyway, I just ask you to really consider it. I know people say progress, you know, there are no negatives. There, there are negatives. This is, we're not downtown Nashville. We're not East Nashville. We're Hendersonville. Let's keep it that way. Let's keep it small town, friendly, <coughs> what we all love. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gina, I'm not sure whether they crossed through this one. Gina Patton, did they cross through that one? Looks like they might have. I don't know. I want to make sure that I announce the name, though. All right, I'm going to move on to Mark Reese. Yeah, are they in the other room, Mark Reese or Gina Patton? Okay, I don't see anybody coming, and if they do come in, we'll make space for them. Uh, John, is it Watson or Joan Watson? Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, is there is Gina Patton here? I want to make I'm, sure. I'm here, but I thought there were so many people that were speaking that I didn't think they'd be fine. So. Okay, well, you're on the list. If you'd like to speak, you might. You don't have to. I don't want to twist your arm or nothing. But, <laughs> but I. <laughs> Hey, I'm Gina Patton. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I've been living here for over 20 years. Um, my road comes out right where the larger development, the 300, um, over the 255 plus places. I know that we don't want this in our backyard. If they want this kind of infrastructure or this kind of structure, they need to put it somewhere where there is the infrastructure that can support it such as over by the new um, Drake's Creek Indian Lake area. I know it doesn't give them a beautiful view of the lake, but we've been living here and we've paid our taxes. We didn't sign up to have that kind of a building put on a little two-lane road. And it didn't dawn on me until someone else said it, we've got one fire station back there. I live at the corner, of right uh, off the corner of Luna and Lakeside Park. We hear that fire hall going off all hours, day and night. How could they get to it, to these places? And if everybody 55 plus that doesn't drive is going to be at their houses or at their condos all the time, uh, they're going to need somebody to haul them to the hospital because we're all, <laughs> we're all 55 and over and we're stroking out left, right and middle. Um, uh, this is not what we... This isn't what we signed up for. I know development has got to happen, but just like another gentleman said, look at those beautiful homes they built down the road that are on the water. Um, there's plenty of money to be made, not as much as this Mr. Lutke, Lutke, whatever his name is, wants to make, I'm sure. Um, but this is just too much for the area that it's in, yes. Build something there. Don't change the zoning. We don't need it. We don't want it. And you're doing us a disservice by allowing that. So. Okay. Thank you very much. And with that, uh, there are no more speakers that are on the list. We've heard about the email, so I'm going to go ahead and declare that hearing closed. Move on now to item number four on the agenda tonight. And that is a request for information assistance. Do any of the commissioners have any additional requests? Hearing none, move on to item number five, additions to the agenda. Are there any additions? All right, hearing none, move on to the minutes. Item number six of May 4th, 2021. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. 
Motion by Ms. Silkwood, second by Mr. Altizer. Uh, any discussion? All right. All in favor? Uh, Ms. Beery, call the roll. And I would note, I think that we are operating with two less commissioners tonight. Well, I, Mr. Hastie is not here as well, so please. Altizer? Yes. Coker? Yes. Hardcastle? Yes. Hardwick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Silkwood? Yes. Stringfellow? Yes. And Jenkins? Yes. All right, that's all eight. Okay, uh, final plats you have before you, Fountain Brook, uh, applicant request deferral. So we'll turn the page. On to item number eight, development plans. We have the Mont Haven Place uh, FDP and FDP ad use for the motor, uh, motor vehicle dealership. Um, Timothy, go ahead and uh, bring us up to date on this one. What you have up on, your, on the screen there is that's the preliminary development plan for Mott Haven Place. Um, the, the kind of the upper section there, that's where Mott Haven Apartments are. Um, there at Mott Haven Boulevard to the right, that's Seller's Funeral Home. Um, the shopping center off to the right, that's that's part of the PDP. This, the area circled there in blue, lots D, E, and F are the subject of the, of the proposed FDP. And that's what this is. This, this is a, a FDP, final development plan for those three lots, and it's also a request to add a use to the FDP, and that use is motor vehicle uh, dealership. So uh, Hallmark Hyundai is located at the intersection of uh, Center Point Road and West Main Street off the left of the, off the screen there. The Dodge's Chicken is in between the circled area and Hallmark Hyundai. Um, what they're wanting to do is expand their parking lot to, um, to this property here. Um, they're not proposing any building or structure, it's just a parking lot, 283 parking spaces. Um, and to accommodate that, they're requesting to add motor vehicle dealership to the list of allowed uses. And that use would be just for lots D, E, e, D, e and F. It would not apply to any other part of plan development. Um, and then if, uh, if this FDP and ad use is approved by the Planning Commission and, and Board of Mayor and Alderman, their next step beyond this would be submittal of a site plan. That concludes my report. Okay, so with this approval, they agree with all staff comments with this approval that will still go forward because of the uh, added use. Am I correct, Timothy? Planning Commission takes final action on the use. The FDP, though, would move forward to one reading. Right, so, the, so the Planning Commission would note this would be a, would this be a minor or major change on this? Uh, you could declare it to be a minor change. That's what I would think as well. So the, the, we'll make this a minor change to the FDP. And of course, it'll go forward to uh, the BOMA, so that'll be noted. Um, are there any questions? Is the developer here for Mont Haven? That particular, I don't. You agree with all staff comments I hear, but still want to, you know, get represented you for Greenlit Design, Zach Baker. I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Okay. All right. Do any of the commissioners at this point have any questions about this particular submittal? Ms. Silkwood. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so if you could just talk us through, I understand there's no actual structure proposed, correct? Just a large parking lot. So can you talk us through a little bit of the buffer situation that you planned between uh, Main Street, Gallatin Road, and, and the parking lot? Yes, so our landscape architect. Hold on, hold on one second. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yes, our landscape architect is working closely with Timothy here to um, go above and beyond what is required for this zone. And as far as um, the specifics, I think um, Timothy has spoke with uh, Mr. Ray, and he may be able to touch on the specific plannings and screenings more than I can. I, I did talk to the landscape architect and expressed to him um, that it's planning staff's desire that because this does not have a building or a structure to kind of hide the parking lot or scale it down, that they would uh, go above and beyond the minimal requirements of the city and just do a really nice landscaping along the along 
the main street frontage as well as enhance the existing fence line by adding stone columns to match the, the stone columns that are there at the intersection of Mont Haven Boulevard and West Main Street. <clears throat> they have agreed to that staff comment. Um, the buffer along the back side of the property um, next to the apartments, they have agreed that there is a, um, they're proposing a buffer there. It's not a, it's not really a really thick, full landscape, you know, impenetrable buffer. It will be more selected and framed um, to, to hide more, to, uh, to hide the parking lot from the apartments, but it's not, it's not like a full on all out buffer back there, but they will be, be providing some evergreens and some additional landscaping back there as well. Thank you. All right, are there any other questions by commissioners? Mr. Coker? Just curious what the intended use of this parking lot is. Is it overflow parking for, I guess, additional inventory for the car dealership? Is this cars that have been serviced or you're going to park there? Is it cars waiting to be serviced? Is it all of the above? Then what's the intended use for this parking lot? So now to my knowledge, and we have the owner here um, to go into further detail, but this would be overflow for additional new inventory. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coker. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, uh, do we have a motion to approve with all staff comments? Need a motion. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Mr. Hardcastle makes a motion. Do we have a second? All right, it dies for the lack of a second. Thank you. That's the that's parliamentary yeah. procedure. Do not have a second, so we cannot move forward. All right, we're moving on to uh, the Sanders Ferry Adult Living Community. Um, this would be the land use plan amendment. Now, let me just state for the record, this land use plan uh, amendment going forward, we could do this together, by the way, can't we? So I could move this. And let's keep them separate. Let's keep them separate. separate. All right, we're going to go ahead and do this separately. And so, this land use plan could we could we could make the addition to the land use plan or make the amendment to the land use plan, which is ours, um, or and then the deny the other, or we could approve both. So it's but we're going to make them separate tonight. We're going to still discuss it, but uh, this amendment tonight is on the development plan for the Sanders Ferry Adult Living Future Land Use Develop uh, the, the amendment to the, uh, the Future Land Use Development Plan. Who is going to talk about this amendment tonight, Keith? Is that going to be you or is that going to be uh, Timothy? Timothy? I'll, I'll answer some questions. Okay, Timothy, go ahead. Right. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll just, I know you're voting on these separately, but I'll just kind of do the whole overview here uh, without objection. Without objection. Um, so, uh, 216, this yeah, this is uh, 216 Sanders Ferry Road, not, not 248, just to make that clear. This is just for 216 Sanders Ferry Road, uh, 6.4 acres on the west side of Sanders Ferry <coughs> Road. Uh, it's north of and adjacent to Nottingham Apartments. And to the north of this property, uh, you have the HUD. Uh, water treatment facility, um, and then north of that you have the uh, uh, Hickory Bay Towers, which is the, uh, the two buildings there at the top. Uh, each is each one of those is five stories. Um, so the current zoning of this property is SR1 suburban residential. Uh, there is a, it has a conditional use permit for an assist, assisted living facility that. Conditional use permit runs with the land. Uh, 
per the current zoning, such, you know, if they, if somebody were to build an assisted living facility, uh, they could have a density of 20 units per acre, uh, which would be about 128 u units for this 6.4 acres. And of course, the, the SR1 zoning allows a maximum building height of 35 feet. Uh, moving on to the proposed zoning, there, there's, there's two components to this. One is the, the current land use plan. It shows this area as suburban living. You can see that land use plan on, I think it's page 11 of your staff report. Um, Yeah, there it is. Um, and that uh, suburban living allows for single family developments as well as senior living. Um, now, they, they proposed the, the applicant's request to rezone this to OTR zoning. OTR is not allowed within the existing suburban living character area, so the developer is requesting to amend the land use plan. Uh, to go from suburban living to Old Town character area, which will allow for the requested OTR zoning and the multifamily component. Um, second, they're asking to rezone the property from SR1 to Old Town residential plan development. Um, they have two uses that they're requesting to be made part of that master plan. One is independent living facility and the other is multifamily. So there are two buildings proposed, seven stories each, the bottom two floors of which would be structured parking. Uh, it's a total of 299, 299 units proposed uh, at a density of 46.72 units per acre. Uh, the maximum allowed density in the requested OTR plan development is 15 units per acre which would work out to 96 units uh, for this lot. Um, moving on to their proposed uh, infrastructure and other, other improvements. So by ordinance, they're required to improve their road frontage um, along the lot there including sidewalk, curb and gutter, and, and any associated drainage improvements. It's about, I think it was 220 to 230 linear feet along the road there. That's just straight out required by the ordinance. So in addition to that, they are proposing, uh, and, and there's, there's four items that I list there in your staff report. Um, there's actually a fifth page one. is that, Timothy? Uh, let's see here. We are on page five. Five, yes. Okay, commissioners, you can go to page five on the report. And I'll, I'll run through those item by item, but in addition to those four listed there, there's an additional fifth one that came to light today as a result of a uh, conversation with a developer um, that was not, it was not clear in the CDP, the Comprehensive Development Plan, uh, wasn't, wasn't clear to staff that they were offering this, but I'll, I'll get to that. Um, so the first thing they're proposing is to implement and to construct all improvements recommended by the traffic study, and you've got a copy of that. Um, if you've got any questions about what's in that traffic study, Mar Marshall will be happy to, to answer that. Um, second. They are proposing a sidewalk connection from Connie Drive uh, east through the site to connect to Sanders Ferry Road. Uh, three, they are proposing to contribute uh, $3,500 per unit, which works out to $1,046,500. Um, four, they're proposing certain upgrades to Mallard Point Park, including benches, a fountain, landscaping, uh, and boat launch. And then the fifth item, which again came to light today, um, in, which is, and this is, this is, sits on top of, th this uh, proposal sits on top of 
the traffic study improvements, it's outside <laughs> of the $3,500 per unit, outside the Mallard Point Park improvements. Um, they're proposing to improve the, the entire length of Sanders Ferry Road uh, from Main Street down to 216 Sanders Ferry. It's at roughly 1.2 miles. Um, those improvements are to be worked out, as I understand it, with Public Works, I, I would assume prior to the BOMA approval. Um, so, in, yeah, we would need confirmation of that, what I just stated from the developer at some point, since all that was, you know, it's not written out anywhere. Um, but we do do confirmation of that from the developer for number five. Uh, so moving on to exceptions. Um, so as part of their as part of their presenting request, the developers requesting five exceptions. And uh, so per the ordinance, the exceptions are kind of like wait like waivers or variances. Um, but exceptions from district regulations may be granted for planned developments. Uh, if the board finds that allowing six, ex, such exceptions, uh, one, enhances the overall merit of the plan development, two, promotes the objectives of both the city and the development, three, enhances the quality of the design of the structures and the site, four, will not cause such an adverse impact on neighboring properties so as to outweigh the benefits of the development, five, is compatible with the land use policies, the city's land use and transportation plan, and six provides a public benefit to the city. So those are the things that uh, the commission should consider uh, in relation to these these five exceptions. Um, and these are these are starting on page seven of the staff report. So the first exception is a density. They're requesting to exceed the maximum allowed density of 15 units per acre by 31.72 units per acre to allow 46.72 units per acre for a total of 299 units. Uh, exception B, lot coverage requesting to exceed the maximum allowed lot coverage of 40% by 5% for a total lot coverage of 45%, and that equates to about 0 0.32 acres that's covered by buildings. So, so lot coverage is the amount of dirt on the lot that's actually covered by the building. So everything at the ground floor is lot coverage. Uh, C, building height, they're requesting to exceed the maximum allowed building height of 45 feet by 30 feet for a maximum height of 75 feet or seven stories. Uh, exception D, the front build two line, they're requesting uh, to exceed the maximum distance that 40% of the front building can be from the front property line by, by about 65 to 90 feet. So in OTR zoning, you don't have a building setback, you have a build two line of 15 to 35 feet. And the way that works is at least 40% of the front of the front building is supposed to meet, it's supposed to be within 15 to 35 feet of the front property line. So they don't meet that. They're uh, roughly about 100 to 125 feet back of that. Uh, and then the last uh, exception is the landscape buffer. They're requesting to fall short of the required 20 foot width for buffers along the west and the north property lines, which is the, the red there, uh, they'll fall short of that by 18 feet. So the, the red line at the top, that's adjacent to uh, the lake, the, the HUD water treatment facility, that's never going to develop. Um, but the, the area there to the, what, to the left of the screen uh, that is adjacent to single-family residential homes, and they're proposing a two-foot two width 
in, which would include um, a wall, a planted wall, and we don't have any details as to what that is, so I, I can't really speak to nature of that. Um, so last thing is, uh, in your review and recommendation to BOMA, I would just remind you to refer to the findings of fact that's in my planning staff comment number 10. That's on page 13. Thank you, 13. Um, and also the procedural, requir procedural requirements for determining if rezoning is in the public interest, is, is all, those are also listed there on page 13. Okay. I think I covered everything. Okay, I'm going to turn so. to Director Free. Early? Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Timothy. I think Timothy did a great job on the staff report and a great job in uh, kind of uh, sharing with everybody what's in the what's in the staff report uh, as well. Uh, as we're as we're looking at this, we have the two items. As the chairman had said, uh, we've got the the future land use plan, and then we have uh, the plan development uh, rezoning request. And the item with the future land use plan. That's a decision that is made with the Planning Commission. It won't move forward. Uh, the item on the rezoning and the uh, combined plan, uh, preliminary and final development plan, that moves on to, um, uh, to the BOMA uh, with, uh, with just a recommendation, whether that be for or against. One thing I may just note is that uh, as we, we've got eight folks here tonight, there is a difference between when we vote for a land use amendment uh, that takes uh, a vote of six for approval on that. That's, that's different than for the rezoning, which only takes five with only having eight, eight, eight commissioners here. So I just wanted to note that, that that is a, uh, is a difference in that. And as Mr. Witten had shared, and maybe the developer can expound on it, um, the, staff, the staff on those things, the one through four of all the extra things that the developer is, uh, is proposing to do. That fifth, the fifth thing of improvement uh, from 216 all the way up uh, to, to Main Street, that was not something that we were really aware of from what the, how the plan has put it. And so it's very important if, if, there's, if, uh, if this passes, uh, it's very important that uh, that's clarified as a part of that because approving that that fifth item, uh, even though the developer may agree to that, we need to make sure if, if there is a motion to approve it, we need to make sure that's in there because it's not in the plan really and in the staff comments that we, that we have. It's just the clarity isn't, isn't there. So I just may, may note that. And other than that, um, I can answer or Timothy can answer any questions that the staff may have or that you may have of the staff um, prior to the developer. What uh, what we can do is if you if commissioners have these questions for Timothy and Keith, let's go ahead and ask. But or if you want to withhold for just a minute, let's go ahead and hear from the developer. Let's hear what they have to say. Um, they've sat here and waited patiently tonight. So, uh, Marty, are you going to speak? On the okay. All right. Please introduce yourself and. Tell us about the plan before us. Absolutely. Thank you all, and thank you everyone that's here. I'm Marty Cook. I represent the owner and the developer on this project. Um, I think if there is one thing everybody in this room can agree on, it is that Saunders Ferry Road needs to be improved. I don't think there would be any disagreement by anybody in this room. If there's one thing that I think most people in this room would agree on, it is that for that improvement to happen, it's going to take a public and private partnership. Um, if we all waited on the city to have the means and the ability to do that on its own, it probably would not happen in any of our lifetimes. That's just the reality of, of the situation that we're in. And you can look at the alignment of um, Old Shackle and, and Walton Ferry as, a, as an example of that. I mean, it's been they've been working we've been working on that as a city for for 30 years now um and it's just 
now kind of starting. Um, this city has looked at a way to develop and invigorate this peninsula for a long, long time. We've all seen the transportation plans and the renderings of having boardwalks along the lake and how can we take advantage of that and make it something that is economically feasible and economically positive for both the city and the residents. What you heard from almost everyone who spoke is a concern about traffic. And so we're, we would like to hit that head on and, and make clear what the owner is proposing to do to help the city make that make those traffic improvements a reality. Um, Timothy did a great job of hitting on some of those, and I know there was some confusion prior today, to today as to, to exactly what all that included, so I do want to try to make that more clear, and, and we are committed to continuing to work with Marshall um, in, in making sure that there is clarity on that and there is specificity on exactly what is being offered. So as, as has been becoming the norm um, in developments in our city, the developer is offering a contribution of $3,500 um, per unit, which would go to the general fund. It would be up to BOMA uh, as to how to apply those funds. I know in some of the other developments that we've been involved in, they, they've been able to earmark that for some improvements that have been needed in uh, the areas around the developments that were making that contribution. Um, and that is something that, that I think is welcomed by everyone and, and quite frankly, probably too late. Um, I, I think the city probably should have been asking for those type of contributions for, uh, for many years now instead of now we're kind of trying to play catch up with our infrastructure. Um, but we're doing the best we can and, and so far I think that's been well received by the development community and by BOMA. So that's one element of what's being offered. Second, uh, the owner has commissioned a traffic study which you have all received. That study made certain recommendations as to how um, it, the, the, the road can be improved in certain ways. The developer and, and owner have committed to doing whatever improvements were called for by that traffic study. Um, third, it, just as late as today, the owner met with Marshall Boyd um, and, and Mr. Boyd had a laundry list of some improvements that he would like to see from Main Street down to where this project is and we are committed to making uh, that the improvements called for on Mr. Boyd's list. Um, that would include also work, working with the utility department to maybe make sure if road needed to be widened, utilities needed to be taken underground, utility poles taken out, whatever, that might include to just in, improve the overall traffic flow and safety of Saunders Ferry Road, which I think everyone is interested in. Um, there, there would be, again, improvements uh, or, or contributions to the Greenway, which has been in the works for a long, long time through various um, public and private partnerships that, that, that we have tried as a city to develop a, a Greenway along Saunders Ferry Road for many, many years, and they're committing to do that as well. So all in, um, that they are committing to somewhere in the range of four to five million dollars for the infrastructure improvements uh, that would be needed along Saunders Ferry Road. They're also looking, because of this being a 55 plus community and their investment in uh, the, 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 the 55 plus community of Hendersonville, they are looking to how they can contribute to some senior focused organizations um, in, in the city to improve the quality of life for, for everyone who's 55 plus. And so a couple of misconceptions that were in the application that I want to clear up. Um, while one will, building will be for sale condominium units, which will be 55 plus controlled by the CCRs, um, the, the multifamily component, even though it's called that, is not multifamily for any family. The, the rental units will also be 55 plus. So this is a, the entire community is a senior living community. Um, not unlike the, the one that is 
now over on Saundersville Road, which is which is a beautiful project and has been uh, a, a great success. Um, so that's that's one thing. Another misconception, um, perhaps in the packet or or tonight, is the impact of an adult living community, a 55 plus community, on um, the city. There is there's no impact on schools because there will not be school aged children, and. The misconception of, uh, of traffic is not that 55-plus individuals do not drive. The difference is a 55-plus community does not impact traffic at peak traffic hours. So it is less likely that those residents are going to be driving at rush hour. Um, if everybody withhold, you know, folks, these people have listened intently to what you've had to say without rebuttal and I want us to do the same for them thank you so that is that is the distinction there that when you were looking at the data related to traffic in an area and traffic around a senior living type community it is that it is less impactful at peak traffic flow times than a normal high density apartment complex may be Next, I would, I would point out that this property is sandwiched between two current multifamily residential developments. So you've got the Hickory Bay Towers on one side, and you've got the apartment complex um, at Nottingham on the other side. So it is within um, the, the bounds of, of what surrounds it, um, and, and, the, and those things have been there for for, for a long time, and, and if you consider the overall growth plan of the city and you look at the, this overall area, clearly moving down Saunders Ferry Road, there was a plan that there would be these types of developments along that first part of the road, and then it would transition into single family um, as, as it goes on down the road. So it, it is not out of keeping with the current zoning that is in place and in, in fact with what it is already entitled to um, for a senior living uh, in a facility. Um, so those are just a few overview items that we wanted to hit head on. I'll now turn it over to Will Hager with Los Design who can address some of the more technical engineering uh, and architecture aspects with you all. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Marty. Good evening. Thank you for having us. Um, I just wanted to point to a couple items in the pattern book and application where we tried to highlight reasons for justifying these requests because we know they're significant decisions that you have to take on. Um, but we, in the first few pages of our application, we tried to list findings of fact that support either something we've identified in your land use and transportation plan that a project like this will advance or other benefits that we've identified that will help the surrounding neighbors um, so please review those if you have any questions about those I'm happy to answer those directly and we do acknowledge that we're requesting for quite a few variances uh, but I will point out that those variances do allow for the significant investments that our clients are ready to take on so in your deliberation please understand that there is a direct relationship between those two things um, with that, um, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Well, I'll, I'll start. I, I think that the first question I have, and I'm sure commissioners will be warming up here, uh, but, you know, listening to Mr. Cook, and I respect him a great deal over the years, and it is true. We do have high density uh, up and down Sanders Ferry Road. It, there's our Saunders Ferry, whichever one you want to call them. Um, and of course, the uh, the additions that the developer is trying to do on Sanders Ferry Road, along with the improvements that are not mentioned in there, which we would get in writing. <coughs> but we still are at one impasse on the first variance, which totally destroys the very zoning that we have there. And by that I mean, in the, in the report, the requirement says this, 15 units per acre OTRPD zoning. That's what you're requesting. 
It places 15 units per per acre for independent living facility. Maximum allowed density for this 6.4 acre, 6 acre is 96. Now, we've, we've had variances before on density and have been gracious on some of those issues because they were not so glaringly high. But this one right here, as much as I want Sanders Ferry redone, you know, I really would, I would like this to work if it could. But you're asking for this commission to set a precedent here of get, granting a variance of 203, excuse me, uh, 203 units over the proposed zoning, which takes us out of really what that zoning is meant for at 15 units per acre. And there was a comparison that, uh, that Timothy did uh, that compared the, the various ones. And they were all, Timothy, am I right? They were all within the 15, 14, 16 range. So, you know, answer me that. Uh, I understand what the developer's offering, and there are they're very good things, you know. Um, the other thing about the buffering and about the, 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 these variances are very, very large variances for this 6.4 acre ask. And I need for you to give us, as the Planning Commission, some reasons why we should buy into this in terms of these variances, because that to me is the trouble I'm having right now, especially with the, with the first one on the density. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, to try to address that. In your land use plan and your transportation plan, there is an overall goal of creating Hendersonville or separating Hendersonville from other suburban bedroom type communities and making it more of a self-contained city. So in order to do that, you need to find the right places and the right times to provide that type of density. To us, this, this is a great opportunity to do that in, with the understanding that that infrastructure needs to come online at the same time. So when our clients came to us initially, they said, this is what we want to do, these are the numbers, and we said, okay, that's, that is a significant ask. And they understand that in order to receive that approval, other improvements need to be made. Um, so if we begin talking about reducing the numbers of units or floors, that's going to have an impact on what they can provide uh, in front of, in terms of other public improvements. Okay. Well, and since you did mention about the floors, I see the fire marshal, uh, fire marshal, can you, can you step to the podium real quick here? Let's, let's do, since you kind of talked about that, you guys stay put. They're proposing seven stories. I see your, on the staff report, there are several items that the fire department's mentioned, but can you please just give us a opinion of the fire department about this particular facility, not like it or not like it, but in terms of the fire ask and the fire protection? So obviously our ladder will not reach to the top like it will in other buildings in the city. Um, there are some equivalencies they can provide, a sprinkler system or stairwells that are protected for escape. Um, it will hamper our ability for rescue if it does, occur. we need to get on the top, but as far as code, um, they meet on those aspects. If, they, if it's sprinkled and they have the proper, you know, stairwells protected. Um, one of the bigger things, I guess, would be would be access, which was mentioned earlier, I'll point out. They do not have the secondary access, and that is required for any building 30 feet or taller. So that, that's one of the major points we got to work through. Okay, and that, that has not been worked through to date? Correct. There are several things besides just the 30 feet, the number of dwelling units and stuff like that that require that access, and it has not been worked through. No, sir. Thank you, Fire Marshal. We appreciate Fire. that. Okay, so, so my take from that is that there are some issues to be worked out with the fire department if they do meet the issue of the secondary entrance, if they meet the issue of the sprinkler systems and all those kinds of things, that it, this, the building could be safe and be covered. Could be the very fact that they could still have to use this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. And, and I think one more thing I, I, I would add to that is that while we understand that some people will not be happy if anything is ever oh, sure. on that property. Um, the owner has tried 
to work with planning, to work with public works, to work with the relevant departments in, in making this plan something that will work both for him and for the city. And so if there are issues like that, that this body has concerns with, that planning has concerns with, that the fire department has concerns with, then we are certainly um, happy to continue to work on that if, 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 if this body would like to see some other variation um, to try to work and get those variances closer um, to work to, to make sure that that the fire department is completely happy then then that's something we would be willing to do if, if that's something if that's something that this body would like to see okay thank you mr. cook are there any any questions from other commissioners we entertain those questions right now to either to the staff or to either the developers, anybody? Yes, please, Mr. Peterson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question about the traffic study. And who may I address that to? Marshal Boyd. Director Boyd, good yes, evening. Sir. Good evening. I, I have a copy of uh, the traffic impact study and on page, well, I don't even know what, I guess it's page four. In the middle of the page, it's talking about projected growth for traffic between Saunders Ferry Road and Imperial Boulevard will grow at 1.5%. Is that correct? And, and this was a study done between October 20th and 2021 that was at the peak of covid what let me make sure i understand what what page is, is it i think eight? it's it's not numbered i'm sorry one two three four five the middle of page five i see a rate of 1.5 percent and that doesn't even take into consideration this development is that correct that may have been a, a background. Sometimes engineers use like a background growth rate, assuming nothing happens. The area still continues to grow at a certain rate, uh, just based on the the traffic counts uh, for that road. I, I believe that's I believe that's what that is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'd like to skip ahead to page fifteen, table five. Am, am I reading this? And this is factoring in the development at two. 16 Saunders Ferry Road, it shows 1,888 vehicle trips per day. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, th there's um, there's general trips uh, generated by this type of development, and there's, it's a simple factor you know, they use based on the number of units. So that's, that's what that, that number represents. Okay. I, I don't mean to beat a dead horse, yeah. but... Um, seems to be everyone's comments tonight and i thank you all for that it seems to be about traffic and here we're adding 1888 more cars onto a, the second most dangerous road in hendersonville I, i'm just very concerned about that and uh, um, I, we do have the traffic study um, a lot of of y'all were asking about it and we have it here, and I'd like to share that with, if everybody, Chairman, if that's possible. Um, but that's, I just wanted to clarify that. Share it with whom, Mr. Peterson? Just as all commissioners have it. I'd like to share it with the city. Okay, uh, it's a public document, right? Uh, yeah, 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 that could be done. We put, okay. it, we put it on the we'll website. On the website. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you, Director. Yeah, thank you. The one thing I, I did want to point out is the, the number of units in the traffic report has not been decreased to reflect the new number of units proposed. So, Say that the, again. The, the, there's, the, I believe there, there's 347 units proposed in, in the traffic report. Now, if I understand uh, Timothy's It'll report, it. It, it, that number will drop. Right. And so this has not been reflected in the traffic report, but it can be revised fairly easily to reflect that. And of course, we all know that to be fair, that those trips are assumed that yeah, that uh, those are potential trips every day that somebody would make. Mr. Hardcastle, uh, this is for both 
Will, and Marshall. Explain to me what y'all talked about today relative to the improvements from this development all the way to Gallatin Road. Pull up your mic. Oh, sorry. The, the improvements that you guys discussed from this development all the way to Gallatin Road today, that's the fifth item that... We obviously discussed all the improvements uh, that were identified in the traffic study, but beyond that, uh, we were going to look at all the deficiencies along Sanders Ferry going towards Main Street. I mean, whatever that may be, looking at intersections, uh, the level of service along that entire corridor, and, and coming up with a way to, to fix that. And obviously, we don't have a, a plan to do that, but it was a discussion um, about how to identify what those are, come up with a plan to do it, and, and coordinate uh, getting those done along with those improvements identified in the study. And, and the constraints of that being the core being it, the biggest one? It, it, it's just one. Um, and I know just from working with the core, it, it does take time uh, to, to get approvals uh, for certain things. But I have spoken with the core, and they, they are on board with, with making Sanders Ferry safer uh, for the city. I've, I've mentioned the idea of making Sanders Ferry wider, uh, adding shoulders, and improving the guardrail. And, and they're, they're open to that. And they they want to work with us. Um, I, I realize it could take some time to do that, but they're certainly not against that, that idea. Yeah. Well, we heard four to five million. How much of that four to five million is specifically related to the improvement of the road from there to the front, yeah. to the Gallatin Road? Well, I think that's been determined by well obviously, Design. but right now we're talking about Four to five million, that's what Marty said. Mm -hmm. How much of that is committed to the road? Basically, well, the $3,500 per unit, that roughly million dollars, million would dollars. be up to BOMA as to how they dispersed that money. That, Correct. in theory, goes in the general fund and they could do anything with it. Their calculations were the additional three to four on top of that would be specifically earmarked for those improvements. <laughs> So capped at four, essentially. I, I mean, there's a there's a point of return that you can't spend seven million dollars well, fixing the road. That, that, that's exactly right, and that mm -hmm. was based on those preliminary discussions with mm. Mr. Boyd today. But that's that's kind of the ballpark that that they felt like it would it, it would take to do the work they discussed today. Uh, since you asked the question, Mr. Hardcastle, maybe Timothy could answer this or Marshall. With respect to the development itself, uh, I know there was a recommendations page on that traffic report, uh, I believe, that listed some things that needed to be done for this particular development. Could somebody go over those with me real quick? Marshall, can you? Yeah, sure. I, I, can, I, can, I can do that. Let's see. Looking at page, I guess, the... Well, it's just a couple pages into the traffic report. There's a conclusions and recommendation sheet uh, that's going from the top to the bottom. Uh, Sanders Ferry and, and Main Street, uh, you would imp add a turn lane, a left turn lane uh, at, at that intersection, uh, modify the signal timing. I, I'm summarizing this to kind of get, get, get through it. But uh, Sanders Ferry Road and Imperial, uh, install a southbound right turn lane at, at that intersection. Uh, and this is getting towards the development. Uh, Sanders Ferry at driveway A, which is the, the driveway into the development, install a southbound you know, right turn lane. Um, of course, there's, there's sidewalk, uh, you, you know, should be installed along the west side of Sanders Ferry uh, along the project site frontage. Um, and also additional recommendations looking at site distance uh, at all internal and external driveway connections. Uh, but that's the kind of the, the summary and the, and the big obviously the, the big one being at the top is the improvements to Main Street um, you know adding a turn lane at, at that intersection would be a big you know be, be a big project yeah. okay and the, these these particular improvements are done in conjunction with the build out of this particular yeah yes yeah, so it kind of clarify this is what was triggered by the by the type of development now, this would obviously, uh, talking about the four or five million, this would just be rolled in into that, to in, into that project. Yeah. Mr. Altizer. Marshall, you've discussed uh, that section of road right there that you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, in the Corps of Engineers. What about beyond that and right-of-ways? 
assume I haven't looked at it specifically, but I would assume we have 50 give or take feet along that entire corridor of, of right of way. Okay. Um, it, it may be more in some areas, maybe less in some areas, but you know, generally speaking, I think we'd have about 50 feet to work with. Um, and and it was, as I said before, the core you know, on their property, I think they'd work with us to get what we need to, to widen, you know, widen that out. Okay, but down by some of the commercial places, it gets pretty tight in there. Right. Okay. right. I'm just curious if you've got enough room there to actually spread the road out that far. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's something we'd look at if it, you know, their engineers would d distinguish, you know, w where it would need to be widened. Um, we wouldn't just you know, go through and try to widen the whole thing. But if certain, you know, key intersections, um, you know, shoulders, you know, we try to be, you know, targeted in, in what we in what we did. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Mr. Hardcastle, uh, I, I didn't want to cut you off. you have any more questions? I, I do have a, another question. We talked about uh, you, you moved it further away from the road. You moved it back to 125 feet. Yes. And, and you reduced the buffer on the back. Yes. Oh, explain to us why. The, the reason we had to set it back so far away from the road, understanding that the Old Town uh, provisions want to see a more unified streetscape, there's very limited room for us to actually get in and out of the of the site. You've got some low areas where you're coming onto across the causeway, and then uh, you want to keep some separation from the next driveway. So working with our engineers, we identified the best spot to come in, and then we had to make turning movements for fire trucks and, and other vehicles to get around the building. So that's what drove the placement. On the back side, um, in order to accommodate parking and additional guest parking, we really had to maximize our site. So instead of a wider buffer, we're hoping to do a more vertical site roof buffer in that place. Okay. Okay. Any, uh, Mr. Hardwick. So I, I'm in that 65 age category and things kind of go back and forth at times. So we're saying that basically what's going to happen would be curb gutter, shoulders, but we're really not talking about making it a three-lane or a four-lane road. We're just talking about improving it from a farm-to-market road to a modern road. Well, we would look, there's things called level of service, and essentially you can grade a road you know, with A, B, C, D, E, F, and you may have heard this before, but you know, we would go through and we would, we would look at that, that entire stretch of road and identify, you know, where everything scores. You know, if, it, if it's an A or B, it may not need a lot, but if it's a, a D, E, and F, maybe it does. And and so we would look at that, and we could you know determine you know what, is it is it three lanes? I, I don't I don't think it'd be four lanes, but there may be you know, maybe some areas that that need that. But but I think three lanes in certain areas, curb and gutter, um, you know, sidewalk, uh, shoulders, I think all that would be part of what we look at in, in making that determination. Yeah. So in a lot of the I guess it's CSX, NES, and the state have killed more road projects in the city than anything else. Right. Is this a is this a county road or who controls this road and how do the it, improvements get get made and who all has to approve? It's it's a it's a city owned road, uh, Sanders Ferry, um, and so you know we obviously are working with you know the, the core, um, you know where where we need right away and, and property to make those improvements. You know, we'd have to work with those owners and agencies to make those improvements. So if, basically, if it was needed. It's, it's us, the property owners, and the okay. core. Yes. Okay. That's correct. Yep. And, and, and the state once you get to Main Street, but but yeah. The no. state when we get up yep. to uh, West Main. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay, uh, Miss Miss. Any questions? I have some more questions, but she's ahead of me. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, Vanessa, go ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So what um, what assurances do, does the city have that these road improvements would be made? Would they be made prior to the buildings being occupied, or what What are you willing to commit to well, as far as that goes? That's where we need to work out with Marshall the timing of these improvements. Um, but we can make those assurances in writing. We tried to speak to them, but evidently not clearly enough in our introductory sections. So we can and want to speak to timing of the improvements, extent of the improvements, and the overall cost of the improvements. And that's what we need to work out with Marshall and his team. Okay, thank you. So prior to the buildings being occupied or no? That might be a little tight, 
just depending on the timing and the levels of service that are identified uh, by the city. Director Free. Yes, I I just wanted to uh, I just wanted to get a little clarification, and I might piggyback on uh, what one of the commissioners uh, was talking about about uh, the involvement and the state involvement, and how sometimes I can drag it out. And I, I think it was mentioned about Walton Ferry earlier, mm -hmm. and that actually is a project that the state is is taking the lead, and we're we're kind of in a in a in a second chair role on that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that definitely has not necessarily been a holdup of the city. It's been more. An issue with the state but but we are moving forward with that uh, but in talking to in talking to the developer today uh, when Marshall and I talked to them and talking about these improvements uh, they were talking about maybe that they would actually undertake the improvements where they would physically do it uh, is that still what they're looking at I think what what was talked about is that they would do whatever whatever our engineering said had to be done and then they would do it and we would check and make sure it was all right but they would physically do it and i just think that's probably a point of clarification yeah, absolutely to me. and and that's a great advantage to a public private partnership where you can leverage private sector speed to bring something online with public sector oversight to make sure it meets your city standards are we okay it's it he he's on his, his mic's on back there Pull yours over. Okay. Oh, me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Got you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Is that it? Yes. That, Mr. Altizer? That answers me. Timothy, I think this is more towards you, but uh, Mr. Prentice, he, he mentioned in his studies that the common area percentages were flawed in the plan. Is there any discussion about that? Uh, so the common area requirement for OTR is 20%. You know, if it were an MFR, multifamily zoning, then that, that would be 35%. Okay. But for OTR, it's 20%. So they meet all those expectations? Uh, per, yeah, per their statement on the CDP, yes, they do. Now, when they get to the site plan stage, uh, they'll still have to show that they indeed do meet those percentages, but yes, they do. I'm 55 plus, and I go to work every day, and... Uh, but so there's going to be people that work and those that live there. Sure. And I'm not sure how much they would cost, and so they probably would need to, to continue working. But And some of them would have children, and some would be taking care of grandchildren. Uh, one of my concerns is the height and not have, being able to get a ladder truck there. And because you're 55 or over, you might not be able to climb steps going down steps or whatever. Just saying that the height bothers me, um, and as many, uh, I, I don't know. I just think it needs to be smaller uh, instead of larger, and that it, the height is really a problem for me. Well, if I can speak to some of the safety concerns that Shane alluded to earlier, uh, we received his comments. We were already identifying ways to provide that secondary emergency access. And in terms of the building design itself, it will be fully sprinkled with appropriate fire department connections where needed. And if we need protected stairwells to meet their code, that's, that's what we're going to do. Um, that's, the fire codes are, are kind of a given when we're designing buildings like this. But I still think it's too high. Well, and, and I understand that too, aside from any kind of safety concerns. But again, that, that comes down to kind of the pro forma and what's possible to provide in terms of public improvements if we reduce size or overall unit counts. So it's, it's a consideration to, to have. Thank you. Well, of course, we want safety to come first. Sure. Obviously. Okay, uh, I see no other commissioners speaking. Uh, Mr. Coker? What were the considerations behind making it a 55 and over community? I'm assuming, obviously, impact on schools, that sort of thing. And you've talked about the traffic. Were there other considerations that went into that thought process? My understanding is that the, that's the market our clients are targeting. Um, obviously, it's, this is a great community for the 55 and over crowd um, and, and others. Uh, but for this location, with other similar developments in the corridor, access to the park, access to the water, it, it just seemed to be a really good fit for that demographic.
Okay, are there any more questions by, uh, by the commissioners? I'll tell you what I'd like to do. It's uh, 8.30 right now. And, oh, excuse me, Timothy, I'm sorry. Can I get clarification on one thing that Mr. Cook had talked about? Hopefully I'm the only one that's confused by this, but in my staff report I'd said that and this is per email that I got from Los that building one was for 55 and older and building two was for multifamily. And that's why the staff report says the two uses are multi the two uses are independent living and multifamily. Are y'all are y'all still wanting those two uses or are you just wanting independent no, it, living? It's fifty five and over. One's rented and one is owned. Okay. Stacked. All right. Thank so, you. Sorry for that confusion. That's on us. All right. So you don't need multifamily. You just need independent living. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. I see no other uh, lights on the board here. Um, it's 830. Um, is everybody okay or would you be okay if we took a five minute comfort break? Commission? Yes or no? <laughs> All right, we're going to stand adjourned till uh, 8 uh, eight forty. Thank you.
I would like to uh, call the meeting back to order. I think all the commissioners are here. If we could have uh, all parties have a seat. We're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, um, thank you for your indulgence. Uh, uh, Mr. Cook, I'm going to turn the meeting over to you. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Um, after discussions with my client on the break, after hearing this body uh, and their comments tonight, and, and particularly some of the open issues related to money needed for the road, the timing needed for the road, um, and some of the questions on the variances regarding density and height, uh, we'd respectfully request a deferral so that we could work with planning and public works over the next 30 days to try to tighten up some of those issues, tighten up the plan, make it more uh, so that the, the, the variances are less uh, than they currently are, and to, to answer questions um, related particularly to the, the road improvements and, and how that can be more clear to everyone. Okay, um, so as I understand it, your your client is requesting a deferral and are you saying for 30 days and this this would need to be we ne we'd, we need to make clear that this if it came back before us there still would be public hearings understood and so all residents would have another opportunity to speak again but uh, this this uh, their client uh, is obviously wanting to try to answer some of the concerns and come up with some better planning I think so uh, that's your right and you're making that motion you're making that request right now yes sir okay uh, plan commissioners we have a request by the nominee uh, the nominee <laughs> we have a request by the uh, applicant here to defer um, I'm not sure that we have to do this but uh, I, I think it would be an order given the fact that they're requesting a 30-day deferral and they want to come back before us with another public hearing what this would do uh, that would give them uh, a deferral for 30 days, it would also, um, we would not be voting tonight on the amendment for the future land use and transportation plan, nor would we, 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 we would be voting on the rezone tonight, okay? And so um, with that in mind, I would entertain if there is the will of the commission, I want to test it here the, to go ahead and uh, uh, Make a motion to uh, look into the applicant's request of deferral. I move to accept the applicant's request for deferral for 30 days. Okay, Mr. Altizer makes the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Coker and Mr. Free on discussion. Yeah, just second. Let me have a thought. So, so if we if we approve the deferral, then we definitely need to have another public hearing, and we'll publicize that and everything for the rezoning, but if it's in the next 30 days, then then we won't have time to advertise for the future land use plan, but we could just let the future land use um, uh, hearing stand closed as it was closed tonight and not reopen that, yes, but just perfect. have the hearing on the other if I just wanted to, I just wanted to make that make that clear. Is that correct, Lauren? Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, and, and that would be that would be consistent because the there was nobody really signed up for that, right? In terms of the future land use, it, it was combined. It was combined together. Yeah, right, right. So. right. All right. We have a motion. Do we get a second? I'm to... You got a second. Yeah. Mr. Coker made the second. All right. More discussion. Ms. Beery, call the roll. Altizer. Yes. Coker. Yes. Hardcastle? Yes. Hardwick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Silkwood? Yes. Stringfellow? Yes. Jenkins? Yes. That's all eight. Okay, consider the matter deferred. And we say to the residents that have come out tonight, we want to thank you for your input and for your comments. Uh, they have not gone unheard. And uh, I think the developers have heard you tonight as well. And so give them the opportunity to go back and do what they need to do. One question.
Jefferson. At this point, if, if I think if, if you guys would just get with them, Mr. Cook standing right there, and I'm sure you guys are well connected, uh, they can make that arrangement, and I'm sure that they will try to provide some sort of uh, presentation, whether that's via meeting or email or whatever. I don't know. Mr. Coker, can you just, Mr. Cook, can you get with them on, on sure, that? Sure, sure. Happy to do that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, we're moving on now. Appreciate the uh, the pioneer spirit of our planning commissioners. We haven't had a long one like this in a long time. <laughs> kind of makes you miss it, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, so uh, the next one that's on the list, uh, site plans, which is the Dobson triplexes, uh, triplexes, which has been deferred by the applicant. Uh, the next one is Glenbrook Village North Phase One Site Infrastructure Site Plan, Owner Vastland Development. Um, Timothy. Timothy, go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, before you go, uh, if folks would just, if you just take your comments and stuff outside, so we can go ahead and finish our meeting, we'd certainly appreciate it. Thank you. Go ahead. Mr. Witt. Okay, Glenbrook Village uh, Phase One Infrastructure Site Plan to so Glenbrook. Village um, is on the west side of Andrews Run. It's about 23 acres, mixed-use development. Uh, you can see it there up on your screen. Zoned MXCPD. Uh, so this site plan is just for the, uh, the I would say, pro a large portion of the road infrastructure, the, the internal streets and the drive aisles that are internal to the development. Uh, plus uh, drainage structures and grading, plus some um, uh, targeted landscaping for the required buffers and, and things like that. So as part of this site plan, there are, there are no structures, there are no buildings. Um, that will be coming later. So as work progresses, um, they'll be coming in after, after this with site plans for the individual buildings or, or groups of buildings uh, in accordance with the phasing stipulated by the the uh, final development plan. Um, I would just point out that included in this phase um, are the required roadway improvements to Forestry Treat Road, which includes widening it to three lanes from Andrews Run uh, to the west of their property line, expanding the box culvert to accommodate the widened road and building sidewalk along the widened section. Um, Jeff, did you have any, did you want to speak to any of the staff comments or, or to Marshall? Thank you. Uh, uh, Jeff Hines. Yourself. Go ahead. With Catalyst Design Group. And uh, I sent a uh, statement in. We agreed with staff comments and just wanted to make one point of record, and I think we may have worked this out this evening, but comments 14 and 15 in the Public Works um, staff comments uh, were new comments we saw at the end of last week, and it was about our traffic study expanding the scope and relooking at the New Shackle Island, um, Glenbrook Way intersection, Creekwood Lane. And the only part about that, I, I think, you know, we can expand and, and look at the intersection, but when this was taken back through as a final development plan, one of the major reasons, and there was a lot of discussion about it both here and at BOMA, that this made sense was that we were actually reducing the traffic by going to a mixed use component of varying uses and not an all commercial development plus it was less square footage overall on that parcel so uh the traffic issues you know we had the right for commercial zoning that was amended with the new final development plan to be a mix of uses and reduce traffic but i think going back and and you know, relooking at New Shackle Island and Glenbrook Way was beyond the scope. So, uh, I would love to have those two comments struck. But if if you want to see us study it, I think the main thing would be our client really doesn't think it's fair to put any improvements at this point in time because the zoning was there. We took the traffic down with the new policy. The final development plan went through. We're doing the forest retreat improvements in accordance with that. I think that was the scope of the new plan and not anything out at New Shekel Island and Glenbrook Way. 
Okay. I, I would just point out a planning staff comment number 10 kind of encapsulates those uh, improvements that were that went along with the FTP. All right. Are there any questions about this particular submittal? Mr. Hardwick? Quick question. You mentioned this is um, multi-use. So do we know, is this going to be, because I think I remember from when this was discussed a long time ago, I was not here then. It was going to be commercial office on the first floor, residential on the second floor. Is that still what you guys are thinking? The same as what was proposed. It was condominiums uh, for sale. It was townhomes for sale. It was retail pads uh, for restaurant sites or other retail. And it was buildings. Two of the buildings had mixed use. Three of the buildings had mixed use with retail on the bottom floor and residential above. And that was spelled out in the pattern book and in the final development plan. So nothing has changed from when it was no. back then? This, this package is about getting them started with grading and putting storm drainage in and utilities while the weather's good, and then come back in before you with architecturals for the specific buildings. Do you, okay, that's all I had. Smart plan. Okay, any other comments? They agree with all staff comments. Do we have a motion to approve? Move to approve, Ms. Stringfellow. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Altizer. Any more comments? Ms. Berry, call the roll. Altizer? Yes. Coker? Yes. Hardcastle? Yes. Hardwick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Silkwood? Yes. Stringfellow? Yes. Jenkins? Yes. That's all eight. All right. Could I Thank ask you so much? one question? Yes, the, you may. The clarification yes. I offered about comments 14 and 15, is that of record where um, – we can perform that additional study, but there's no expectation that something be approved in that regard. It's a little bit nebulous in that comment. Marshall? Yes, I'd help clarify. We can, um, we can strike, if it's easier, we can just strike 14 and 15 from the, from the comments and, and this, you know, move forward with the approval. Thank you. Answer question? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very so much. much. Thanks, folks. Okay, we're moving on now to the stadium townhomes architectural revision site plan amendment and uh, Grant, I think you've got this one. Go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. This is an application. It's a previously approved uh, uh, site plan for stadium townhomes. It's 38 units at the intersection of Imperial and stadium drives um, in the kind of the old town area. Uh, it is currently under construction. Uh, the uh, owner uh, in Halo Realty requested uh, to revise their approved elevations. I believe it was mainly due to, to cost considerations uh, from what they were originally approved with. Uh, they've requested this. Um, it would uh, actually probably be better in terms of having the owner to uh, describe that. The, the reasoning, but that was that was my conversation in terms of that. Uh, the OTR does require 50% brick or and or stone on all sides. Uh, the original stadium submittal um, had the buildings at 90% uh, brick, and uh, with the remainder. Oh yes, sir. Uh, the the original uh, currently approved stadium townhome plan had uh, the buildings at 90% brick, and these new elevations they've submitted are 51 to 57% brick, depending on the, the, the building. So it's it's a reduction in the, num the amount of brick. Uh, they have changed uh, the roof design and uh, kind of standardized the, the look of, of the building. So I'd say uh, reduced the number of, of types of windows uh, by, by one or two um, on the elevations. And uh, the new design has a di different stoop. It looks like it is a, a larger stoop overhang. Um, so, so that that's uh, that is an improvement there somewhat. And um, the elevations seem to have less articulation on the second story, and uh, than, than the currently approved plans. Which, if you look through the the packet here, there's. There's the uh, examples of the, pre the currently approved elevations with, uh, you can tell, that it has the more brick 
and the the more pitch on the on the sides of the roof uh, where the the proposed revised elevations are below that on in your report and it has more of a flatter roof and uh, it does look more like a, a, a townhome type unit but um, but it, you know that we had some some request to, to look at the roof elevation and try to try to change it where it wasn't so flat and uh, you know, that was in comments four and five and tr to try to add uh, more variation in the windows uh, the types of windows kind of pr more on, along the lines of what was previously approved you know I, I understand that the elevations of the, the, the exteriors were were changed to try to reduce some cost I think and uh, uh, we did have some concerns about the uh, the way that the elevation showed the um, the foundation because in OTR there's an 18 inch foundation requirement from the the highest grade um, yes so essentially they, that the, the the minimum there has to be 18 inches out of the ground with uh, with that foundation so they were showing the the ground coming up to to that 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 um, basically the the without a, an 18 inch right rise there so uh, so they did agree to that that they would revise elevations to show that <clears throat> but as far as comments four and five uh, where we just kind of asked that they look relook at that roof and, uh, and and look at more variation in the windows they they did not agree to that so uh, essentially it would be if it's approved it would look along the the same lines of what's what's being proposed um, however we don't have a lot of townhome architectural requirements even an OTR so it, it technically does meet the requirements so that's that's what makes this difficult <laughs> okay I'm going to invite the applicant to come forward and uh, if you would just introduce yourself and kind of explain to us first of all the reasoning behind the new look and uh, the roof lines and then the windows. All right, um, I'm Sam Anderson with Anderson Architects, uh, 48 West Caldwell Drive, Mount Juliet, Tennessee, down the, down the road from you guys here and across the lake. I can get here in five minutes in my boat. It takes 45 minutes to get here. <laughs> um, yeah, working with Danny Hale, uh, the original design was pretty symmetrical. It was, it was mirrored facade, two sides, all brick. This one, he's in an attempt to save money. Uh, we revised the elevations with more of a craftsman style. We can get the windows um, more variety. I just was a little unclear with some of the comments. Um, the top elevation, the top long one, is the rear elevation. So we enhanced the rear elevation, I feel, substantially over the initial submission. Not that it was bad. I'm not going to say uh, my plans are bad, but... A little boring perhaps um, but the front elevation that's the triplex unit there it's got kind of just three units um, the front we varied the roof line with um, some Dutch gables or jerkin head gables whatever you call them with a little chop gable some gables within gables and then we've got a shed roof um, coming out over one of the roofs there one drawing that you didn't have that we produced is um, we did some 3d like perspective level drawings. I don't know if this is something that you'd like to see what it kind of looks yeah, like. Yeah, if you would just pass view. those around, it'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure we got that in our package that we can, that was submitted to us. I, I'm, you can start those right here. Yeah. There's two different. Uh, there's two different versions of the quadplex unit. And, and the, the triplex doesn't step down, but the quadplex steps down one foot between each of those buildings. That occurs, I think, two times on the site. The rest of them are flat where the quadplex appears, and you'll have a flat roof across there. But twice, I think, the quadplex steps down in four sections like that. So we think that's going to give it uh, some variety and uh, difference. Now, the, the windows... I mean, I'd love to work with Mr. Um, Grant, right? Green. Green, Green. yes, sir. Sorry. Um, work with you on the windows. We, we did kind of, I've got some young guys in my office, so I'm going to blame them, right? But they're, they're the Revit guys, the 3D guys, so they do the work. Uh, the bathroom windows that you see on the ends, 
of the front elevation are turned horizontally, and previously they were more vertical in the bathroom there. We could, we could get those windows there. So the top windows in the bedroom, which is to the right of that bathroom window we talked about, that could be a pair of 3050s for egress purposes. The window below it, we could make that 3060 and just make it a little bit taller. That would give you three different looks of windows per unit there. On the back side, we've got about four different kinds of windows, or basically three right there, but we could go to four. But that's, that's pretty much what was shown on the previous submission. So what, I'm, what I'd like to ask is that we'll work with you on the windows. Um, we don't have a problem with that. We just wanted a clarification on that. Sure. The roof line, we really don't want to try to do too much on the main building roof line as trying to save costs, that would be. Can I, can I interrupt you just one second yes, on the inter on, you mentioned that on the, you've got two quadplex units that are gonna have this kind of variation. Am I, I correct? I think it's two, do you? Do you so that's eight units and the, the, you say the main building, it's all gonna be what I'm assuming would be your proposed, on your proposed standard elevation, revised elevation, which really does not show that variation in roof line. It's just straight across. Right. The, the main How many units will be uh, just straight across with roof line? How many units? How many? Like 10, 10 units? <sighs> Sorry about that. Six units will be flat across the top. Two will be stepped. And then we've got two triplexes, Three. yeah, two triplexes, and they don't step either. So out of, out of 10 buildings, two of them will be stepped. And uh, the other eight will not? That's correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. No, that's, that's a valid question. We don't have a problem with the 18-inch. We've got that worked out. We, we realized what we did there. Um, we can get you some more bird's eye views, but really the, the front porches of the building step up about two and, a, uh, two and a half feet out from the face of the rest of the building. Uh, the upper level should step out as well. And then on the back side, there's a projection where the board and batten is shown with the bedroom window. It sticks out about eight inches there to, to provide some relief. Okay, so the the initial submittal was all brick. Yes, sir. And Almost ninety percent. Right, and so now, uh, if I if I understand Grant, the the brick load on these are going to be where at fifty between fifty one and fifty seven as submitted. So it's it's uh, with the remainder being been hardy and okay. What would be the the architectural possibility? Uh, the, the variation look right there that you have uh, is more, I think it, for me, it's more pleasing than just a straight across roof. Um, uh, it, has, it has some merit to it. Uh, that's just me though, okay? Um, my question is, is, is there a way, and maybe this is a staff question, that we can, um, you've got eight buildings essentially, so what you're going to see is eight predominantly are going to look just like this, whereas two of them are going to look really uh, more interesting looking. You're right on this end of Stadium and, and uh, Imperial Drive. I've, I've been watching it come up. I go by there every day. And uh, my, my question would be is, is there a way that since if we make a concession on these materials, on the 90% brick, is there a way that we can go back and try to figure out a way to create more uh, of a look that a lot of these uh, units would have that? Well, I, I know it was approved with 90% brick, but I think the requirement is only 50% brick. Right. So I was told to come in here and try and lobby hard not to change the roof. Um, I know it is more expensive that you create more potential for leaks. I mean, there's just a, there's several things that I could sit and, you know, kind of argue about, but we, we want to work with you. We want to get it approved. Um, and I can do some studies, I think, with Danny's approval to 
show a variation. If we, if we just push the roof out a little bit further on some units, that would pop it up. And that's maybe some low-hanging fruit that we could do, not, not too hard maybe. Well, the, the reason, only reason I ask it is because, I, you know, one of the things about townhome living um, is, is if you can really create that this is a separate home, but it's not. Yeah. I think that makes a difference. It just does. And, I, you know, when you drive by it, it just doesn't look like a long, narrow yeah. building. Once again, that's just me. <laughs> so what do we need to do on, are you willing to take, work with staff on that? Yeah, definitely. I, the main reason I'm here is to try to clarify kind of the window. Uh, just well, get Mr. It would be uh, comment, five, uh, comment four as well, I would think. Yeah, the roof lines. The uh, roof line deal. So I, we're, I, com we're, we're, we're kind of, <laughs> we're looking at that one too. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we'll work with staff and, uh, Get something worked out on that. Uh, Grant, t uh, first of all, what do you think about what we're proposing here uh, as far as the roof lines? Uh, yeah, I think uh, it would be helpful just to anything to, to, to break that up would, would be good. Uh, and, and the windows, what you were saying as far as that goes, uh, it sounds good. And, and it, you know, if we if, if you submit something that shows kind of what you're talking about, I think it'd be helpful to to make that determination, but but really kind of along the standard of, you know, it's not that much different uh, than than the original elevation, but uh, just having the same standard size windows uh, on some of the elevations, you know, basically two different types of windows, it does kind of make it, um, it, it looks more, um, more, more plain, so I think, I think if you uh, if if you do try to change up the the sizes of windows, it would be very helpful okay. uh, and probably a, a cheaper uh, one of the cheaper alternatives to, to break it up. And the roof line too, if 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 we could see something that that does kind of break up the the particularly the ones that are flat, you know that that would be something we would we would want to see to to you know to try to make that uh, make that compromise. Awesome. Okay, so with that, uh, what we would be needing right now is a motion to approve with all staff comments with the provision that applicant would work with the staff on on the roof lines and the uh, the windows. Got it. And then we'd leave that up to staff to handle that architectural revision. We'd go ahead and approve it. Any motion for that? I'll make the motion. Okay, and the motion will be to... Uh, that we will approve this plan. Uh, points four and five will be discussed with staff and an agreeable solution will be met. Uh, I think that's it. Okay. Second. We have a second by Mr. Peterson. Any more questions? Ms. Beery, call the roll. Altizer? Yes. Coker? No. Hardcastle? Yes. Hardwick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Silkwood? No. Stringfellow? Yes. And Jenkins? Yes. All right, that is six and two. It passes. What's the vote again, Fern? Six and two. Six to two, and it passes. Thank, Thank you very you. much. All right, uh, with that, we have preliminary plats, Bellsford Landing Phase 1. Uh, I agree with all staff comments. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Stringfellow. Any more discussion? Ms. Beery, call the roll. Altizer? Yes. Coker? Yes. Hardcastle? Yes. Hardwick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Silkwood? Yes. Stringfellow? Yes. Jenkins? Yes. That's all eight. Okay, staff level projects approved. You've got them there before you. I'll not, since we've gone long and all, take, uh, take time to read all of that. You've got the staff le level projects that are pending. They're in your report. We have one resolution that we need to deal with tonight. It's Re Re resolution 2021-03, a resolution recommending acceptance of abandoning an unused public right-of-way known as Dwight Sherlin Court. We have a motion to uh, approve. Moved to approve by Mr. Altizer, seconded by Mr. Sil Ms. Silkwood. Any questions? 
Ms. Beery, call the roll. Altizer? Yes. Coker? Yes. Hardcastle? Yes. Hardwick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Silkwood? Yes. Stringfellow? And Jenkins? Yes. That's all eight. Okay, planning director comments. Uh, no comments tonight, Chairman. I know, I know. I'm surprised myself. Kid, kid. I, I, th I, kid, kid, I think kid. it'd be wise for me not to say anything Can as we late just as it is. Savor this moment. <laughs> no. We always enjoy your time. Yes, yes. Ms. Stringfellow, do you have a motion? Adjourned. I'm sorry. Second. <laughs> we have a second? Second. A second by Mr. Altizer. We are adjourned. <laughs> sorry about that. Yes.